Free markets operating without proper regulation are sometimes seen as operating mainly for short-term interest, as opposed to operating in the greatest interest of the country and the world at large. What role should the government play to ensure both short-term development and long-lasting benefits? To what extent should society have a strong government that is efficient in decision making while still working under a system of checks and balances? Today, futurist Jorgen Randers from Norway joins our discussion. He's the author of 2052, in which he tries to predict what the world will actually be like in 40 years. And you, you, you seem to lose faith in these voters and politicians in the West, and they always focus on their private interests as opposed to the overall general public interest. Um, don't you think it's a little bit too pessimistic? No, I do not think so. I have spent 40 years of my life trying to convince the Western societies to try to take into account the long-term consequences of short-term growth decisions. And I have failed. The capitalist or the, the corporation is maximizing its income in the short term. It is not maximizing its income in 30 to 60 years. And the nation state is also, in a large extent, pursuing its short term interest uh, when it is democratically governed. Do, do you think it is a combination of a strong government and also a market economy? that has kept you so optimistic about China's future development? Yes, it is, because I think that, that you need to allocate capital in a manner which serves the national interest, not allocate capital to those things that are the most profitable, because it, there is normally a gap between the two, and as long as a strong government keeps control over the central investment flows in society and sees to that they go in the right direction, it can leave to the market to execute on these things. But it's, so yes, one needs a combination of strong government to set the direction and then the market to, to deliver you know, on those uh, big decisions. So you believe in a strong government, particularly when it comes to poverty alleviation and climate change, these long-term problems. Uh, some people doubt that a, a strong government may also make un, you know, unperfect decisions. And what should we do to avoid that? see this in, in big multinational corporations. They are organized in a highly non-democratic manner. They have a small leadership, the board, the chief executive, who makes the decisions, and they make them rapidly. And they have the need, like all other strong government, to try to make sure that they make the right decision at high speed. And of course, the best way to do this is to try to listen to as many advisors and as many input as possible before you make the decision. But not fall into the trap of standard democracy, where you keep talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and never get around to passing the decision. But also corruption and this um, bureaucracy may come along when, when the government gets too strong and too big? Uh, well, uh, yes and no. Uh, corruption is not only connected with big government or strong government. There was corruption in the West until 20 years ago, and it's only during the last 10 years that we have really gotten uh, effective in the fight against corruption. It was only with the passing of the anti-corruption laws of the United States, you know, within 15 years ago. I believe that if your government decides to do something about corruption, it is fully possible to get rid of it. It will not happen in one year, but it might happen in 20. Mm -hmm. And you argue in your book that the West should should promote this idea of big government or strong government because um, their history of market economy has solved most problems that are solvable by the free market. Do you think the Chinese market economy has already developed to that stage? Yes, you're right that we have during the last 20 years 
solved most of those problems that the market can actually solve. So in the West, I think we are now at the stage where there is there will be a swing back towards stronger government in order to solve some of the problems. For instance, in the energy sector, in investments in, in the renewable energy. In the case of China, uh, you still have a strong government, which is supplemented by a market. Uh, and I think that the art here will be to try to maintain the strong government even when most of the advisors believe in the democracy and the free market.